come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination hey you can help us out with that by uh, clicking that like or subscribe button wherever you found us and help us become the fastest growing podcast in the world yes yeah. okay yeah uh <laughs> these are the internet radio superstars michaela holly sean and i'm colin everything you said was true and <laughs> <laughs> and tonight uh we watched a movie that was chosen by sean what gem did we finally watch tonight? We finally watched 1982's The Beastmaster. <laughs> As we analyze your childhood one movie at a time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, really, that's what we were doing through most of this. I'm like, ah, oh, memories were coming up. It's just like, whoa. It's true. Tony Roberts. Mm -hmm. What took so long for The Beastmaster to show up on this show? Uh, I kept waiting for Michaela to do it. <laughs> It's been on my list. Uh, yeah, for, it was on our list. I was it's say, been on my was, list for years. It's been on my list too. Yeah. It, it's just one of those like I don't know why it took us so long to finally get to it. I mean, I okay, I have a list, and for every one thing I cross off the list, I add three more things. So like, it's a list yeah. I'll never fully get through. You know, oh, it's like, true. Yeah. This is it's true. true. This was kind of an alt pick for me because I always I have to go based on what Colin picks because I don't want to double up. Like if he does a action movie. The week before, you guys did Death Wish 3. I don't yeah. want to come and do the same thing the next week. So mm -hmm. um, I put away the pick I had, and I figured the Beastmaster is like coming up in a little bit in pop culture. Vinigo Syndrome is uh, releasing a Blu-ray and 4K of mm -hmm. it, and uh, it's slowly coming back. You know, mm -hmm. it's been mentioned. It, it never left. I mean, it yeah. never left for some no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it left me for about 15 years, <laughs> but you know, we're um, back tonight. Well, the uh, well, I was going to say that it never left because uh, what was the joke? Um, it was like Dennis Miller came up with this joke oh, that is now that, permeated yeah. into pop culture that apparently it ran on HBO so much that HBO apparently stood for, hey, Beastmaster's on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never heard That's that. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Now, see, I watched it on TBS. The Beastmaster Station. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And they were, those jokes aside, yeah, they ran on HBO and TBS a lot. I mean, that's how I saw it when I was a kid. Like, yeah. I, that's shocking that I managed to miss yeah, this. Yeah, Like, I can't believe missed I missed this. this. How many yeah. Sword and Sandal movies did you? I, Sword and Sword and Sword that was not my thing as a kid. Like, yeah. it. Well, I mean, growing up in the '90s, there wasn't a ton. No, that was like the that they was were not. Yeah, they were done by yeah. then. That well, was you had that predated like, me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had the Scorpion King, maybe, and Cull, uh, yeah. the Conqueror was maybe yeah. the last one of those. But uh, wow, are those our but, contemporaries? But they just weren't making them in the '90s the <laughs> way just, they did in the '70s and '80s. You know, because I think that was uh, what we were talking about. That is like uh, what what caused this like boom in sword and sandal movies um in the 80s i mean they never really left because i think we were tracking it back it was like there was the biblical movies mm -hmm. became like the hercules movies right yep became eventually the sword and sorcery movies right. and they're yeah. all like they're all it's just like they're all transitioning as time goes on because you'll find this same movie in something that comes out today like the same themes and story and stuff like that. But not like barbarians and no. loincloths with swinging swords around. And, no, you know. not bat people who dissolve yeah. their the, enemies. The, the problem now is that when they try to do this, they cast someone like Sam Worthington as the lead. Mm. That's why it doesn't work now. Like he was in Clash of the Titans and Wrath of the Titans, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Both those movies are terrible. Not the first one. The original Clash of the Titans no. came out yeah. in this era. But, but <laughs> right. those, the two Sam Worthington yeah, versions. And yeah. then they, then uh, what was that? Immortals? I was going to say with Immortals Henry Cavill. With Henry Cavill. They, they yeah. Immortals, yeah. Yeah. And did that you, was not good either. Yeah. I was going to say, you've got better star power right there, but it wasn't good. But that good. movie still wasn't, it wasn't good. Yeah. I had yeah. higher expectations for the movie. Too. I was still disappointed. What yeah. was Immortals? It that was, was uh, the it was a yeah. Greek myth of uh, the Minotaur and the mm -hmm. well yeah wow. didn't uh, the Greek, all the I was Greek like gods. I don't remember much about it I don't honestly. either Frida yeah. Pinto was in it I yeah. think yeah. too yeah. who did what was the movie with Christian Bale mm -hmm. and Joel Edgerton as oh Egyptians. that's way different that's God yeah. God's oh, yeah, of that's Egypt God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's but then there's also okay there's gods of Egypt but then there's uh what was the other one with um oh uh, fuck 
There, gods and kings. Oh, that was there Exodus. was gods of yeah, Exodus, was, gods oh, and yeah. kings. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the the those came out around the same time. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm yeah. About. I don't know the difference between those two. Yeah. <laughs> There's a big difference, but you wouldn't know that based on the trailers or oh, the yeah, titles. Right. Yeah, yeah, one of them's a crazy science fiction movie. Yeah, and, the other and one's a biblical, biblical movie. Epic. Right. But the titles are so interchangeable, and yeah. the stylized, like it's. No, neither of them are really worth watching. But I assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gods of Egypt is crazy. It is crazy. Is crazy? That movie is nuts. Crazy. Because that's the one that Nicholas Coster Waldo is one of the gods. Yeah, and yeah. he's, but like all the gods are like 13 giants. feet tall, yeah. but like just barely giants, though. Yeah. They're like just slightly bigger than people. Right. And so the eye lines don't match up on anybody I when they're talking to anyone. I remember this movie. It was like... There's like gold bugs carrying carriages and shit. It gets yeah. wild. This sounds like a freak show movie, it might guys. Be. It, yeah, you gotta give it a couple more yeah. years. Right? It's definitely... It's, yeah. <laughs> and Jared Butler's in that, yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Right. And um, is Jermaine Hansu in that one? Um, well, you gotta remember. have your, your, your black sidekick yeah. as we do yeah. in these movies. Right. So yeah. I don't know right. if I made it all the way through Gods and, of Egypt, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. But uh, mm-hmm. so this we were saying maybe there was also like the preponderance of like Dungeons and Dragons and post Star Wars and yeah. all that that led sure to- and like we were talking about earlier like the Satanic Panic like it just uh, when it was happening in the um, early eighties it drummed up like um, interest in mm-hmm. like things like Dungeons and Dragons and sword and sorcery stuff because you know if you have a bunch of people telling you oh, this is dangerous and you know it's got Satan in it and what's the first thing you're gonna do what's the first thing you're gonna do Colin I mean I'm gonna run right towards and be like what, <laughs> yeah, what, what yeah, are they yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you can think the war for a lot of that they're a lot of the reason that D gets connected with satanism they like in their quote-unquote museum of artifacts they have like a D guidebook that they claim is possessed so you can blame, oh, really? blame them and their and their you know scammery for that interesting yeah and you were saying about that uh, fantastic uh, Tom Hanks movie, Mazes and Monsters, oh, which was God. the anti-Dungeons and Dragons movie. It really was. <laughs> From the same, I think, 83, that one came out? Yeah, it was around this, yeah, yeah. Yeah, around this era, a lot of stuff coming around, around this era, because Conan come, came out and Conan. So which came one came out, and, out first? Was it Beastmaster or Conan? I think Conan came out in May, Beastmaster came out in August. Okay, of 1982. Yes. Okay, so uh, the other reason that we were saying that this movie is obviously on a lot of our lists is because we didn't mention the director. Uh, who directed this movie? Don Coscarelli. Who, why do we know Don Coscarelli? I mean, you know him from the Phantasm, or from Phantasm, I should say. And Phantasm 2. Phantasm, Phantasm 2. Mm-hmm. Phantasm, Phantasm 3. Phantasm 3. Phantasm 4. four. Phantasm. But not 5. Not, not five. Ravager. <laughs> not no, Ravager. He Ravager. No, he didn't no. direct Ravager. Oh, I nope. didn't know nope. that. <laughs> not even written nope. or anything? Nope. No. No. Nope. Okay. Nope. He has a story by and characters by credit, and that's it. Damn, did you? Uh, I'm just curious. I mean, did you ever find out like what? So I mean, like he had um, Don Coscarelli. Well, I mean, famously, he was the first like 19 year old kid mm-hmm. who, to sell a movie to a major movie studio. Mm-hmm. That was uh, Joe the Jim, Jim Jim the world's greatest. Jim the world's okay. greatest. Yes. <laughs> well, for, we we cannot title. remember the title of this movie. How long? <laughs> yeah, how long? Jim the wonderful Jim. <laughs> we went back and forth for so long trying to figure this out off mic. <laughs> I forgot finally, right. Jim the world's greatest. Yes, right? yeah. Yeah. And Kenny and Company, is yep. that like a softball movie or something? It's like a coming of age okay. movie. All right. Then he did Phantasm, all, right? Yeah. yeah. Was the next one. And then yep. he kind of like became like a cult movie director. Mm-hmm. And that was like 79. Mm-hmm. So this is 82. This, this is, is the next immediate movie. follow up. Yep. This is a very different movie from yeah. Phantasm. Yeah. Uh, is Little this the, the most like outside the box uh, Don Coscarelli no, movie? No. John dies at the end or Bubba Hotep. Oh, yeah, Either one of well, those. Well, those are, they're all definitely those are weird. odd, but like Beastmaster, I guess maybe because Beastmaster seems like it's within a very specific genre. But a genre that is really popular and still has staying power today, like the, like sword and sandal fantasy stuff, like has always been around and it'll always be around. Like yeah, it'll uh, John out. dies at the end. I don't even know what kind of movie I would say that is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And Bubba Hotep the same way. I don't even know what kind of movie I would say that is. Oh, that's right. Fuck, now true. that you're, you know, like the you're saying that the staying power <laughs> yeah. of, of these type of movies, it's moved to video games. We have video yes. games are basically, uh, you know, the continuation of like, uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of people who play tabletop Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. not sliding you in any way, mm-hmm. but the majority of folks are probably playing video games based on Dungeons and Dragons Can type. Can you imagine a your video game? <laughs> <laughs> I'd play right. the shit out of that. See yeah. our what, your what Hunter from the Future episode. Yeah. If we could get a game that is just called like Sword and Sorcery and have your the Beastmaster who else? Who was the other one I was thinking of? Shit. Um, Conan. Conan. Uh, yeah, well, Conan. Conan. Call the Conqueror. Mm, there was somebody else I was thinking of. I can't remember it right now. We've done uh, the Death oh, Stalker. What's his name from Circle of Iron? 
Oh, oh that guy. God. As, as, like, <laughs> skins you he would be the worst yeah. character you could yeah. be. <laughs> no one would pick him. <laughs> yeah, and then throw on Christopher Lee. Yeah, but there was a ton of like uh, uh, fantasy movies, both American and Italian, that came out in this period of time. I think, like you know, that's why when you say Beastmaster, I mean, I know a lot of you out there are probably saying like this is you know the one that we remember the most. Um, I mean, you know, obviously Conan was like the big one at the time. Um, but then, you know, the Death Stalker, there's like four of those. Right, I was going to say, or Sorceress, which <laughs> yeah, yeah, things yeah. I haven't watched until coming you know, now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank God for the freak show. Yeah, and then the Italian ones, because you got like a tour, the Fighting Eagle. and A tour. Yes. Yeah. Uh, your, I guess, was well, co- Italian it's co-production. Q the Winged Serpent? Is that no. A, that's no, a, what is that? See? That's a, like a horror movie. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sound like it. But, um, so, okay, so, so. So Don Coscarelli somehow gets this idea to like, uh, you know what? I'm going to try something different and I'm going to make a fantasy film. Well, because all the kids are into this Dungeons and Dragons. Well, he's a kid. He's into Dungeons and Dragons. That, I mean, and, yeah, he's like, what, like 24, 25 <laughs> yeah, years old. Yeah, he's so making he's this into movie? all this stuff. Because he and, was like 21 when he made Phantasm. So. Right. And um, this is loosely based off of a book called The Beastmaster. Um, what's her name? Andre Alice Norton. In 1959, she wrote a book called The Beastmaster, which is extremely different from this movie. It's about um, Navajo, co- Navajo culture, um, genetically engineered animals. That's why the character can speak to animals in the book. But other than that, it's more futuristic and not sword and sorcery. Yeah. So, well, sounds, sounds cool. Totally yeah. Well, yeah. The, your, your Navajo soldier gets, because uh, he's like a soldier also, yeah. he gets transported through a portal into like an uh, alien world where I think, you know, the, a lot of sword and sorcery stuff uh, okay. takes place. Um, but, uh, she sued to get her name taken off this, I think, because yeah, she this, uh, it yeah. started out as like, they were going to do like a, I don't know if they were just like, Hey, this is a cool book or we're going to do it. But they went like a completely <laughs> right. Yeah. As we were writing, they went in completely different directions. So she, again, like you said, sued to have her name taken off of, cause it wasn't even close. Yeah. So, okay. So he's just buying it. So it wasn't a rip off of Conan cause they couldn't have seen Conan, but I mean, obviously mm-hmm. that was another thing that was happening in that period of time. I think with the rise of Dungeons and Dragons, Frank Frazetta's artwork was, a, became a big yeah. thing. Yes. All that fantasy Boris Vallejo, uh, you know, all tied in, in the, in the Marvel Conan comics. And you got this big, they must've known that there was a big, you know, Conan movie coming out from, uh, universal pictures. Um, so this one, um, so are they the mockbusters of Conan? You know, decided to come up with this and go for it. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't seem. I mean, I don't know. You know it doesn't seem like it. No, this seems yeah. like a, a original idea that they. You know, they're not trying to cash in. They like want to do it. Yeah, because wasn't Sword and the Sorcerer was like a, the major one from like I don't know if like Columbia or somebody put that one. I mean, like everybody had their Sword and Sorcery movie yeah. at this point right. in time. Um, so, but there's a lot of similarities, I guess, that you'll see in these because the movies uh, are they're like these juvenile myths, kind mm. of right, where it's all about like somehow there's this kid and you know something bad's going to happen to his family and he's going to be reduced to you know um, the trials of I guess youth and young adulthood as they you know, have to overcome sure. a bunch of stuff in order to vanquish the bad guy. Who's um, who's the bad guy in this movie? Well, I suppose we should talk about who our hero is. Sure. Who is this Beastmaster, and why is he who he is? He is, well, as the movie starts, he's the unborn son of the King Zed, who rules. Um, but as we start the movie, Rip Torn, one of our bad guys, is he our main bad guy, Colin? <laughs> You seem to have, uh, uh, I, it's I'm not clear cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. This as movie. this movie goes, uh, yeah. But Rip Torn has got his, uh, his three cauldron witches, and at the beginning of the movie, they foretell a prophecy that Rip Torn's, uh, Mayax will be killed by Zed's unborn son. Okay, all and right, so, so we got prophecy. We, right, got, we prophecy gotta have that in these movies, all right? And so they, uh, he plans to get the son, uh, in a very unique way. I think he, he sends uh, one of his witches to Zed and his wife, who's pregnant in bed, paralyzes them, and then he switches, he transports the baby from the mother's womb to a cow's womb to steal the baby. Because, obviously, if you want to kill a baby before it's born, the easiest way to do it is to transport right, it. Steal it. Yeah. <laughs> steal it in a cow, 
and then take it to a <laughs> magic fire and then kill it. And the prophecy also says uh, like something about him being like a future leader or something, right? It's very whispered, so you only catch a little bit of I it. Th- I, think. I think we should keep a, a little counter going here. This is the first instance of something George R. R. Martin stole from this movie. Okay, yeah. So because you know, in in um that first season of Game of Thrones in the first book, when Daenerys is is pregnant and is about to die and called Drogo is about to die. The witches come in and they're like, well, if you sacrifice his horse, we can save his life. And then they end up taking her child and and killing it. It's it, it is like this situation kind of reversed a little bit, but the whole, like the language about like, you're like the baby's going to be the one to lead the world. That's, that's all in game of Thrones too. So, yeah. you know, and it's also so, instance number one. Like, so they're all, so they, that would lead us to think that they're all kind of pulling from a, Similar source it's material, like right? Frazetta and like all those, because there was like gore, it was a novel series right. and all this. Is like and I mean, Lord stuff. of the Rings had been around for yeah. what, 50 years at this yeah. point? Wait, By the time the Lord of the Rings Like in around. the 20s. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's about the time like fantasy as being written was, it seemed like very big. There were right. a lot of serials and uh, like weird tales weird and fantasy. Strange tales. And, yeah. and you know, if this was the only similarity, I'd be like, that's just fantasy. <laughs> but you know, well, as we'll see later on, there's, yeah, there's like seven or eight right. no, very, there is very a lot. specific things things taken yes. from yeah. this. I mean, why okay so the witch brings a full on cow mm-hmm. into the bedroom of the king and queen um so why didn't she just stab the queen's belly right that's what I'm saying not as interesting <laughs> <laughs> I mean clearly she had no problem getting in there she brought in a fucking cow right, yeah, right. and right. paralyzed them so, and paralyzed them so and then the queen move. the queen dies so that wasn't she was never like trying to save her life or anything so why right. didn't she just stab the queen's belly maybe in order to <laughs> I like the way you're like, like Sean you should know the answer yeah, to this right. yeah. yeah you brought the way. movie yeah. uh, maybe in order to <laughs> deactivate the uh, prophecy yeah. Okay. There's a certain way you have to right. do it. Oh, like because that way, way it wouldn't be the, the king's firstborn son. It'd be the cow's firstborn yeah. son. Oh. It's semantics, I okay. guess. Yeah, yeah, right? Just that. I mean, Colin, you say it, but <laughs> yeah. no, I'm actually, you shake your head. I actually agree with that logic. But there you go. It, okay, yeah, there you go. We cracked it. You had, yeah. it had to be born. I yeah. get it. That makes sense. Because don't right. they even refer to him as the unborn son later on in the movie? I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. True. He, was, he wasn't even born. He was cut out of that cow. Yeah. But he's Saved at the uh, at the Wait, moment. Wait, so of- that that actually ruins the logic because then they really could have just stabbed it because it's still unborn. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. But again, magic. Uh, yeah, magic. Magic. Yeah. This is in a book somewhere. I. Yeah. So one of the one of the Macbeth witches uh, who have beautiful bodies, but like uh, you know these monster faces shown yeah. off in great camera shots. Can right. I, I think they that- start at the feet, go up the yeah. uh, a very nice body, and then end at the very. I love the face. makeup jobs. It's they're so very good. They're creepy. Yeah. I just want to say the uh Sean and Colin's audible reaction <laughs> to when they hit the face yeah. in that shot made my night. It was. It was ooh. Aw. Aw. <laughs> Damn it. But like it's effective makeup. But it, it looks is. Re- this is was this an expensive movie? It had to have been, oh, right? The budget had to have been pretty big on this. I mean I, for the time, I mean it was a nine million dollar movie, but That's nine million dollars in, in nineteen eighty uh yeah. two. That'll get was, you. Yeah. yeah. That's a um, lot. I mean, a lot of that went to his leather bondage costume. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> oh, the costumes. Well, not not the Beastmaster. But oh, no, we'll, no, no. we'll get there. Yeah, we'll okay. Get there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, so the Beastmaster is uh, saved from. Uh, so basically, he's born of a cow or mm. some, and this is going to uh, account so for some of his superpowers because there's a little bit of the Superman myth here right. uh, that's going to come up because he's rescued by this dude who lives in this village mm. and raised as one of them but he has to keep his uh powers <laughs> secret yeah he even gets that that kevin Costner speech of you have to decide what kind of man you want to be he yeah. even gets like that speech oh, from yeah. his dad yeah 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 <laughs> wonderful that's that's the hero speech yeah yeah it's the, the, yeah, yeah great power yeah. yeah comes great responsibility what are his great powers Why'd you all look at me? <laughs> uh, this seems like your area of expertise. Uh, Speaking he, to animals? He can I mean, I do do that frequently. So. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah, this is second instance of something George R. R. Martin stole from this movie. The ability to like literally jump into the minds of animals. And the way they visualize it in this movie is the exact same as the way the show visualizes it. And that to me was like where I was like, all right, this isn't even coincidence anymore. Because this is li- HBO watched this movie and was like, hmm, no one will notice. No one remembers Beastmaster. Right? That's what they banked on. Right Us going, not remember. Oh. Remembering, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah, sorry if this podcast gets taken down because HBO came to knock out our kneecaps (laughs) over this. But you you can't say stuff like that. 
<laughs> We're going to have to label this episode something else, Colin. Yeah, keep yeah. them off her back. <laughs> Definitely not Beastmaster. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely wait, not wait, a takedown of George R. R. Martin's entire career. No, no we not need to find all. a different title, though, because if they can do, what was it, Mazes and Monsters? Yeah. Like, that is yeah, the yeah, that yeah, is yeah, the yeah. Uh, the Walmart brand. Yeah. Yeah. Of, yeah. Dungeons oh, and Dragons. Yeah. We need the Asylum so, Films title version. Right, of yeah. whatever Beastmaster is yeah. going to be. We'll think about it. Animal but, yeah. Commander. Yeah. Oh. All right. Right. Animal Commander. That's pretty. Bravo. It's good. It's not bad. Not bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, That's he, why uh, you all looked at me. Yeah. Got it. The Beastmaster grows up into a strapping young lad. He's played by uh, Mark Singer, who wears only straps. Yeah. Ironically, who yeah. we know from. I was going to ask, where the fuck is this guy from? Where'd they find I, this guy? I mean, I really only know him from like this. And oh. did he get cast because of his torso? Like, did he show up to set like that? And they were like, "You're the Beastmaster." Well, he is, I mean, he is fucking yeah. jacked. Is jacked? Is. What you say or cut? What's the word? He's cut. He's He's cut. Cut. Okay. Because yeah. he's like incredibly he's lean. lean. There's no yeah. fat on this guy's body at all. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm jealous. I yeah, know. he was in. You don't have to look it up. I can tell you, Mark Singer is famous because he was. Well, later because of Beastmaster, he was in V. The uh, oh yeah, he was, oh. yeah. yes, he um, was it in, all comes back to V. I yeah. should have known. <laughs> it does. It really all does come back. But to some v. of our uh, listeners may also know him from Watchers Two. Watchers, the one with Corey Haim, not yeah, that no. one. The sequel, yeah. Watchers Two. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, wait. Couldn't the boy and his dog and the monster, like another movie with a connection to a monster and shit like that? Uh, to Watchers? Yeah. Well, the Watchers there... wasn't there a connection between like the dog and the monster? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a yeah. All comes was, back yeah. like they say in the movie. <laughs> Life is a circle. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I almost lost my goddamn mind when I heard that because I was like, wait, does HBO just steal everything from Beastmaster? Because I was like. Is he about to say time is a flat circle? Like, that's basically what he said. I mean, yeah. and I was like, yeah. Hmm. well, I mean, everyone in the world has seen this movie. So, I mean, it just kind of leeches out there into popular culture. Uh, I had no <laughs> idea going into this that this would be the most influential movie of our time. <laughs> <laughs> well, none of us knew. Um, Mark Singer, also, his uh, sister is Lori Singer from Warlock. No? What I mean, okay. Anyway, oh. moving on. Hey, this guy. Uh, this guy's still working. He's on the Arrow TV show on the CW. So hey, good for him. Yeah. I know. Five ep run. So I mean, he was like a character that had a story arc on that show. He yes. wasn't just he was like someone's an extra. Dad at some yeah. Point. Yeah. Is and he, he was, on Instagram? Someone he was like, also in the Beastmaster <laughs> sequel. Yeah, see if he's terms. still like ripped. Oh my god! You remember the bad Shia LaBeouf movie Eagle Eye? Yeah. He was in that. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. I, I Dude's movie. still working. I mean, what? Wait, you, get, you get a lot of Mark, Mark Singer, Singer. With the C. Mark with the C. <laughs> Thank you. You get a lot of work off of Beastmaster if everybody mm-hmm. knows who you are. Sure. Um, okay. So the uh, so he grows up, mm-hmm. right? And then in a very Conan the Barbarian kind of scene, uh, the the Jun Horde yeah. appears over the horizon and lays waste to the entire village. And yeah. they look like a bondage gang. But I, mean, I kind of dig it. I kind of dig their look. I mean, I do too. It all looks really cool. It all it's all very um Mad Maxy. Yeah. Like yeah. it feels like the the oh, what was his name? Uh Humongous or Yeah, Lord Humongous. Lord Humongous. Yeah, it kind of feels like a little like Lord Humongous. Uh they're wearing more clothes in this movie than Humongous wore. But <laughs> <laughs> but the lead guy, he's got gigantic bat wings on the top he of his does. helmet, which is It looks so cool and it makes the cool it's like shadows and stuff. I I I dig it. Yeah. It is good. Well, I mean, he bag. shot well because we established that the guy who shot this movie, John Elcott, like did like all the Stanley Kubrick movies. That's yeah. awesome. Like, what? Yeah, this guy shot two thousand and one: A Space Odyssey. Probably in the same place, or at least for that monkey scene. Yeah, right. Yeah. And also Terror Train. Um. So, um, <laughs> it is a good looking movie, though. I, think. I know. I was it, like, is. it looks good. We yeah. were remarking on some of the shots, like he got some like low sunset through eye holes and masks. And yeah. yeah, he got some good. And stuff. it also has a, uh, I think, because it uses a lot of helicopter shots and a lot mm-hmm. of like wide, sh- you know, vista shots. It kind of has. It's not so much a scale, but it's got like a scope. Yes. Yeah, right? it does. Yeah, to yes. it. Um, it does feel big. It yeah. doesn't like sometimes these like sword and sandal movies and even if they are expensive it feels like they're only shot in three locations you yeah, know yeah. and this one does yeah, the feel Roger broad. Corman ones feel yeah. smaller I feel like no. his shots are helping along the plot more than anything else yeah, yeah. yeah. all right so speaking of this uh-huh. plot okay so so you're right your your village is destroyed by this bad guy with the bat helmet mm-hmm. okay so houses on stilts don't yeah, understand I it. don't in the middle the of the desert like yeah <laughs> like, if why? there's water that's yeah, one thing middle but of the desert, desert. Right. don't like, get it i'm pretty sure they're in utah right now yeah. Yeah. Like, maybe there's no beasts way. there's horrible beasts that can i don't know it would have been cool if that was had, the case right but we didn't yeah, see yeah we didn't see and it. had they only discovered they had a beast master living with them like right. it wouldn't be a problem because it could have been a side quest he could have saved the stilt village from the beast that's 
making them live on stilts. Right, this bear that is uh, just attacking everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, did, wait. You didn't say about the uh, his. He, he does have a beast friend and the village. Uh, a dog, wolf dog. Named, oh yeah. A uh, white ghost. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kodo. Kodo. Uh, it no. Was no, it was yeah because he named the ferrets later after that. Did dog. he name it yeah. Kodo? Did yeah. He? Okay. And that dog takes an arrow for him and uh. pulls him out of pulls the crumbling village, just like a, a, a little <laughs> little character we saw in Game of Thrones do. Like literally <laughs> took arrows for his. It, it, and man, <laughs> the fact that it was a white dog too. I was like, okay. all right, we're just gonna leave for the next half yeah. hour, and Michaela's gonna talk <laughs> about, into, about everything. <laughs> it all it back I, to Game I of don't Thrones. understand why it's taking him so long to finish these books if he's just ripping off from Beastman. Oh, he's watched the four sequels yeah. and got the rest yeah. of the book. Yeah. Um, okay, so he sets out on a on I guess a mission of revenge, right? Yes. That's what he's going on. And uh, his first stop because he he makes some friends along mm-hmm. the way. Mm-hmm. All right, so who who oh, does he this, meet? Uh, yeah, he he links up the squad. <laughs> he does. <laughs> yeah. he calls them all together. Um, he he meets a hawk. This is where he learns he can like work into falcon. things. A falcon, yeah, yes. some sort of a predator bird. Yeah, um, this is where he learns he can like work into it. We see like the bird eye view cam, just like Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> but for whatever reason, when he needs to speak to the hog, he actually has to call out like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's better it's than a, that. It's, 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 ah, okay, it's, yeah. it's pretty but great. He does it, but it's I know. better than a call. It's, it's like, Oh, I want to try it, but I, I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> Didn't we figure that was like his first spoken line in the movie? It or second, was his second? second. His first one was like, it's the Jun. Like, yeah. The Jun. Yeah. 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 And that was like, what, 30 minutes? Yeah. And those were his only two lines? Yeah. 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 It was a little while before we get some personality. <laughs> yeah. But then we get it. Well, he also hooks up with uh, two ferrets, two lovable ferrets. They are wonderful. They're they're the stars of this movie. Yeah, yeah. I Sean, I w- I didn't think you were serious when you said they play a huge role in this movie. I thought oh, no. you were fucking with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they so, are. They're like fourth billing. Yeah. I, I would say. Yeah. I would give them fourth billing yeah. in this movie. Kodo and Poto. Kodo mm-hmm. and Poto together. Yeah, on the screen. Who save him from quicksand? Because that's an also a yeah. staple of the fantasy movie. Yep. Yes. Quicksand. Yes. Quicksand. Um, he meets also a black tiger. Ugh. Yeah, 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 Black Tiger. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's this tiger's name? R- Rue. But he R-H-U. says it like... Rue. He like rolls his R. Like, <laughs> but he doesn't enunciate like the vowels. Like he just like, yeah, it's like he's breathing out yeah. when he says What's your tiger's it. name? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. It well, does. The tiger is, it's a black tiger because it's a fantasy magical <sighs> tiger, but in real life they spray painted a, a tiger uh, of course, the thing's licking the makeup off of its yeah. face. It's hard to watch. Uh, oh. All the time. Um, yeah. internet, the internet will Broke tell you that heart. this tiger died because of this uh, dying, but uh, uh. according to Coscarelli, that wasn't actually true. Um, you know, it washed off. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, mm. and, uh, I would need to know, like, what did they use to dye him? I think Holly's going to start an investigation. All right, yeah. we're going to, yeah. Because he's very clearly licking himself, and his yeah. tongue is black. You yeah. see it in one yeah, scene. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like this isn't the fucking. Hopefully wiz- not spray paint. It's yeah. not the fucking Wizard of Oz. They didn't use Jello on this thing, so I'm pretty sure whatever it's licking. Probably off, that same didn't makeup. Do well. Probably hair dye. That you, it's, yeah, hair that hairspray. That you, right. Yeah. And he's consuming that. Yeah. Not a good thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like. You think of how much they had to use to get him that black. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, not okay. It is it's not good. Sad. Not okay. It's hard to look yeah. at. Good. Um, he also well, he fends off a, a bear. At one point, uh, he didn't, when he's, he With talks to a bear when he's a, when he's a kid. <laughs> when he's a kid, yeah, yeah. His first his first instance in when he finds out that he can communicate with animals. <laughs> There's a very vicious bear attack. <laughs> Their friend from the village is. Yeah. It's it's like a raptor got a hold of him. Yeah, he's being pulled it's up in a, a tree, yeah. <laughs> like it's pulled in and out. Amazing, I it, love. It's great. It's like Jaws in the forest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. I love it the way it's shot it's though. <laughs> yeah, I love that it's like a guy on a pulley getting yanked through some bushes. It b- really repeatedly. is. He's, like, far, yeah. he's yeah. far too high in the tree, and then a bear walks out. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Well, when well, he gets like legs. thrown up and down and side to side in these trees, yeah, it's wild. Yeah, that was insane. That's what it's like. Um, Hercules. No. Oh, where he throws the bear into space. No, it's yeah. gonna be worse. Ace Ventura two. <laughs> when he falls into the shark tank, oh, he's yes! getting pulled back and forth. That's, that's exactly what that's it felt like. That's the first one. Is it the first one? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. It second is the one. First one. Second one. He wrestles an alligator. Right. <laughs> I've seen those movies. You guys remember too time. much about those I've movies. I've seen those movies so many times. <laughs> well, the Beastmaster also makes one human friend uh, here early on. In forcefully. This he forcefully makes a human friend. Who's the human friend? 
Tanya Roberts. Uh, may, she uh, may she rest. Yeah. Tanya yeah. Roberts, yeah. yeah, star of uh, stage and screen. Oh, she was yeah. yeah, tourist yeah, show. <laughs> I mean, what? Uh, uh, what was I? Nope, I lost it. Well, I, she was. I bet you she got left out of the in memoriam of the Oscars. I'm gonna go look, but I I bet money she got left out. I don't remember hearing anybody complain about it. That's all the only way. I didn't watch the Oscars. Well, okay, what, what, that no, no, I, I don't either, it. but I'm always curious who they leave out yeah, because yeah, it's always it's egregious true. who they leave I out. I usually yeah. watch it just out of curiosity. This is the first year in a long time I didn't give a shit. But Colin, if they include her, what movie clip are they showing? Uh, View to a Kill, probably. Yeah. Or yep. Beastmaster. Oh, where she's doing her butterfly dance in a View to a Kill, right? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I think because of this, she got a View to a Kill. Mm -hmm. yes. She had been a Charlie's Angel. She had been in Tourist Trap. Angel? Uh, Bond girl playmate as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to promote this, to, to promote, promote this movie, yes. But apparently, that came out after the movie was already out of theater, so it didn't help <laughs> drive I mean, it uh, an a audience. Few people just not the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, eventually, she became a star, a movie like top build. Like she got her own movie Sheena. vehicle. Sheena. Sheena. Based on the Sheena Queen of the Jungle. Which has also <laughs> been on my list for a number <laughs> right? of years. Because as I was eventually. researching this yeah. movie, I looked at that and I'm like. Okay, yep, noted. Yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then noted. after Sheena, everybody decided apparently she wasn't that good of an actress. And then in the 90s, she had a run of, the, it was like her and Shannon Tweed ah. were competing on those erotic thrillers that would show mm -hmm. up on video store shelves mm -hmm. before oh. she became the mom on that 70s show. Damn, I don't remember the Tanya Roberts ones, just the Shannon Tweed ones. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, Night Night Eyes is one of them, and maybe like uh, Inside Private uh, private something. I can't remember. I, I, <laughs> I can see the box it. covers. Yeah. but Probably red shoes in there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Colin owns all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah they've got a, got a closet full. Um, so, also, w when we meet Tanya Roberts, uh, she is bathing with a friend of hers, topless under a waterfall. And at this point, we're like, this movie's rated PG. Indeed. Uh, so, PG was clearly a different thing in the early 80s than it is yep. now. Yep. <laughs> Cause there's C like CR Howard the Duck episode for more yeah, on that. Yeah. Well, even in uh, Clash of the Titans, another fantasy movie, there's a boob shot in that, too. Um, the violence is. Uh, uh, more, you know, like what you would expect from like a PG thirteen now. Yeah, in these PG movies from back then, why did parents think it was okay to take their kids twelve years old to go see Beastmaster? <laughs> well, there wasn't a PG thirteen at this point, right? So no, no. so like it's I not mean, hardcore enough to be an R, and there's nothing in between. So yeah, well, I'm know? just surprised. I think it's because their distinction was uh, the ratings board was was if it was if it was a non sexual nudity, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you could include it in a PG rated movie. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, okay mm -hmm. for kids to see. So, of course, you know, for all the young boys who right? saw this movie, it was a very uh, eye opening experience. Um, I'll be sure to cover my child's eyes when I show him the Beastmaster. <laughs> well, what? You got to give him the same experience that you did. This is no, very okay. true. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the um, there's some things that kids just have to work through, apparently. Yeah, but Colin, kids have the internet now. I mean, this yeah. is very They can true. access is, yeah, so much more. Is, Beastmaster yeah. is PG now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now it's back to PG. Sean, would you say time is a circle? Oh, there it oh, is. There it is. is it an iron circle? <laughs> Not this, not this movie. Not this movie. Nothing being dissolved in oil. No. Oh, well, she's a, well. so she's a she plays a slave girl in this. She's a slave of uh, the Rip Torn character. Rip Torn is that his real name? No, <laughs> it is. I think it's. Uh, oh, I wrote it down because I knew I wasn't going to forget. Uh, remember this one? It's like Rule. Uh, like the Elmore Rule Torn Junior. Oh, okay. Elmore. Elmore. Elmore yeah. Rule Rip Torn. But he just went with Rip. Why not? Yeah. I mean, it's a good stage it's a good, name. It's a good stage name. Yeah. 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 He had a long, varied career. He played Judas Iscariot in the movie of the Bible, or it was the King of Kings, a big Hollywood epic way back in the day. Damn. But you'll remember him from... Dodgeball. Of yeah, course. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I remember from Marie Antoinette. Okay. I mean, I yeah. think Rip Torn is, because his career was so varied, everyone's going to have something else they rem remember him from. Mm -hmm. okay. I was like going to say Men in, the Men in Black series. And that's a big okay. one See? where he plays. Wow. <laughs> Different for everyone. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I've seen all these, but yeah. yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, and that was the other thing too, Rip Torn. So he's basically this magician, sorcerer type dude who likes to sacrifice children to uh, his fire god yeah. or something. He lives atop a pyramid where he's always like, you know, plucking kids out of the crowd and throwing them into the fire pit mm -hmm. uh, because the God has to be appeased. Yes. He has this uh, crazy 
a prosthetic nose, which I thought was like he's going for like a hook witch nose, but that's not apparently true. When which part the nose or the nose is it real? No, no it's what's what? What was the point of the what's, nose? Yeah, what's the point apparently, of the nose? Apparently, when Rip Torn showed up on the set, he's like, you know what? I want to play this character like a turkey buzzard. That makes sense. Okay. I can see that. The like hunched shoulders and like bad posture. Right. And was, like, I'm thinking like I'm just I, watching Holly's face. Like, <laughs> oh, I can see the cartoon okay. version of it in it's my head. Such, yeah, yeah, I can see what he was that going is for. Such a weird fucking choice. <laughs> it is a weird choice, especially because when you look at him right on, I, it looks like him. Under, uh, yeah. It doesn't look. Yeah. When you look it's from the profile. Like, yeah. yeah, but I like that Don was like. All right, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah I, don't I love like that. This, I don't yeah. think it can. It, I don't think it can hurt. Mm -hmm. Like well, when you have when you see the varied costumes of the characters and the way they look, a giant nose. Is, but is this uh, how actors like fuck around with this directors like Kool, when they're Kool like Kool in uninvited? When yeah, you know, I'm gonna yeah. have teeth and an accent. Or yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I'm doing something that nobody's gonna see, and this is stupid. So I'm just gonna. Well, well, I want to be a turkey buzzard. That's how you know a good director, though, Colin. A good director will know when to say <laughs> that's enough. Yeah, a good I director think. will not let the actors run all over him and let him do whatever they want like you can allow them so much yeah. but until you get to a point where you have to say okay yeah. that's only asking yeah. for a nose yeah. that's not so bad <laughs> well it sounded like coscarelli had to rein him in so yeah. Yeah. i bet i bet he was i bet he didn't leave character often i'm just yeah. guessing this is just my thoughts of riptor the, the braids with the skulls at the end was that a choice whose choice was that uh <laughs> <laughs> costume design or his I mean, who knows it's kind of crazy yeah. he has like uh he has some magical abilities of his own well it's mostly through his witches I right so, he's yeah. able mm -hmm. to, to to uh to see what what's going on in the world he also has like a third eye kind of thing because eventually he gives a character a ring that has an eyeball inside of it mm -hmm. and the eyeball reports back to his crystal ball mm -hmm. you know thing um, cousin to the eye in the book from Hocus Pocus. I, I think? was just thinking I think that. Yeah. I think that's confirmed. Very similar. I think yeah. they are related. Okay. There, there's another set of characters. There's two more sets of characters we have to set up in order to somehow get to the the, the climax of this movie. One is the what? which climax? I was like, what climax? Okay. Like, well, this is, that, yeah. Yeah, did right. I miss it? <laughs> <laughs> Michaela's still waiting. I'm like, did I? I didn't. I didn't go to the bathroom. I didn't step out of the room, but I didn't see a climax. <laughs> Maybe that was in Beastmaster Two: Portal Through Time. Is that what it's called? It. <laughs> I think, no, I think that's. I think that's Turtle Three. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, so, it's something like that. No, it's is like that portal. Turtles in Time? It, Turtles in Time. There, it, it, portal is in that title. I, I believe. Think it's portal in Time. I think it I might be, be Portal. You know, what, the more you guys talk about the sequel, the more I'm like, all right, we got to watch it. It's <laughs> We're right. gonna watch the yeah. trailer yeah. after yeah. this is over. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. We have to. Um, and there's a third one. Yes. Yeah. And a TV series. Yeah. <laughs> different uh, characters, though. <laughs> or different uh, actors. Yeah. Do they take oh, Manhattan? I, I mean, only in the second. So Mark Singer decided he was too good for this at some point? I mean, it's No, he was in, he was in, like, because I think the sequel was 94, and then there was another one later, like 96. Wait, the second one didn't come out till 94? Yeah, because yeah. the, oh, yeah. the fandom yes. for uh, Beastmaster built over, yeah. you know, because it's, it, I don't think it did that well when no, it came it out. No, it's 12 years later, though. Well, That's yeah. so Because of all like, the, oh my God. you know, you TBS said that, that <laughs> it was the second most highest, like, rated thing that they had next to Gone with the it, Wind. It ran... <laughs> Between Gone with the Wind and this, they were the two that I'm ran sorry. the most ever. <laughs> that, two, that sentence, that sentence is the most the wild wind. thing there I've ever. Two <laughs> kinds of people in the world, <laughs> right? So, uh, <laughs> there's a be here either and a then beast on Christmas, master there's person one type or, of person and that's it <laughs> wow uh, Colin I can't I can't get over the fact that those two movies were just in the same sentence together yeah like I know I know this is uh, yeah we're clearly on to something here um, there's so right. much to mine from this my god I'm sorry an hour's not going to be enough to get through this Colin <laughs> <laughs> probably not the well he meets uh, the uh, so there's a creepy scene right where his uh, <laughs> uh, be more oh, specific, the, yeah. Okay, so oh, he okay, finds yeah. this lighted tree on a hill, and he goes uh, up there, and then suddenly finds himself surrounded by these statues. What, what were like, those? What like, were those like? They were like glowing, they're like sacks. Like I think yeah. there's more people yeah. in there. Yeah. 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 There's more, I actually, in, in my mind, remembered people falling out of that, but that could have been Space Hunter, where that actually happens. Uh, another, yeah. um, but so these these things show up, and they I don't know, they look like totem poles or something standing yeah. there, but they move. And it turns out that they eat people 
by unfolding their giant bat wings and encircling you in a big bear hug and then dissolving you into a puddle of goo. I mean, it's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> it's it cool. Is, it, but like a puddle of goo, but your bones still drop out. Yeah. Which yeah. is... Yeah, it's kind of like... the uh, flesh off your bones. Yeah. It's like Fright Night where the, his assistant dissolves and that's all that's left of him. Yeah. Like yeah. That. yeah. But like imagine them, that's what's happening inside. They're like fleshy looking though. Like their wings are like flesh wings. They're veins. And yeah, veiny. and they sound yeah. like it too. Like Ugh. they make that noise. Yeah. It looks like the poster from Jeepers Creepers too. When you get somebody's like face inside the thing. Yeah, going, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. It's, it's yeah. really dissolved. The costume design is really effective in this. I mm -hmm. think it's really unique looking and really gross. Yeah, they're very veiny. Yeah, Don't appreciate veins. that. Should have put contacts in them. Otherwise, they just look like yeah, people. But you know, yeah, there that. is that. Um, but anyway, he is saved from this predicament because his owl companion, owl's name Hawk. is Hawk. Hawk. Hawk's companion, Shirak. Shirak. Okay, Falcon. <laughs> 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 We'll just call him Shirak, I guess, from now on. Shirak the bird comes down, and Shirak apparently the they worship. Uh, yes, there is an actual totem of a giant black bird right in front of their tree. Yeah, apparently so they they're worship. like, okay, you must be a friend, and then they retreat into the blackness of the night, and when, never they, to be seen again until the climax when they're needed. They give him a medallion, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, right. is, this is like the uh, the critter's remote control, whenever you need to call the bounty hunters, like, press yeah. this, or send your hawk with this medallion. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is his first up. side quest is completed, because he got the medallion, he <laughs> completed the side quest. a d and d movie. It is. Like, I can see... Everything behind, like I can see the influence of D and D on this movie. Like, there's certain scenes. We have the side quest here. We have like the hallway that he's got to climb the chains to get down while monsters yep. are underneath him. Yeah, yep. he's got to figure out a switch. In yeah, order to stop I played the shit out of through. this campaign. This It'd be is fun as totally hell. a D and D campaign. Yeah. So, well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, did Don Coscarelli, big D and D player, maybe sat down and actually made the the script based on playing? A D and D campaign? We don't know. We don't know for sure. Yeah. And none. Of, I haven't seen any of that. I haven't listened to any new audio commentaries on Beastmaster <laughs> yeah. Blu-rays. We can only speculate, but it feels like. Well, but Colin, like if you go to a convention, you ever meet Don, he'll tell you whatever you want to know. Okay. About you can ask him, and he he loves talking to his fans. He's a great guy. He'll tell you anything you want to know about making any movies. So. I'm slowly getting warming to the idea of meeting people just because yeah. I've finally gotten questions to ask yeah. like, famous people after all these years. And Don, like it's said, but he never has a line or anything. Mm. So he'll like, he, he will sit and talk to you until someone else comes up to the table, basically. And that's been my experience at least. But I love that when the hawk lands on the statue, he kind of like jerks his shoulders at him. Like, yeah, bitch, what of it? Like, <laughs> yeah, this is your what? chosen one. Give him the medallion. Like, it's like the hawk knows what's up in this situation. Yeah. But yet, our hero doesn't. It's weird that his like sidekick is like, yeah, you're about to complete your side quest, bro. And like, <laughs> did we say yeah. his name is Dar? Our hero's name is Dar. He's Dar. Dar. We got He's Dar. We've got uh, the. He comes from like a land down under, <laughs> and, he, and uh, the tiger was. Ruh. 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 Yeah, Rue, right? Uh, Tanya Roberts uh, at least gets a two syllable She's name. Kiri. Kiri. Yep. Um, and they're going after the big bad guy, right? Yes. I mean, that's that's where we're heading with this. And there's side quests, and eventually they meet uh, John Amos, and he's like a traveling monk, uh, like soldier who's training. The he was, but he king. was in the beginning of the movie. He was working for yeah. Zed. He right, was right, a soldier right. for Zed. Are Probably his king's guard. Are you talking about Seth? 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 Yeah, Seth. Seth? Seth and Tom? Seth and Tom? I'm Seth. This is this is like him, this is being, him being Mark Paul Twain in Dune. <laughs> like, yeah. we have yeah. House of Trades. This yeah. is Paul. Yeah. Like, that's... I love when they do this. <laughs> it's just so world-breaking every time they do it. Ted! Yeah. <laughs> well, he's uh, the one who's outfitted in the heavy metal... Uh, a road warrior uh, outfit yeah. and his monk's robe. Apparently, when I thought and, I was going to see this guy's junk so many I mean, times. Oh, yeah, yeah. God. Yeah, for Apparently sure. Apparently, when him and Mark Singer like first saw each other in a costume, they just burst out laughing. I would think yeah. so. Yeah. You would have to, right? Yeah. yeah. To just, like, They're so go along with high it. cut on everybody. I know. You really like, got to like, hope you're strapped in underneath yeah. that. Like, some tight fitting <laughs> underwear. Something's going to flop out. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And I was looking. So who, uh, <laughs> well, okay, so who's this kid, Tom, who's traveling with Seth? Okay, so Tom. Kira's cousin. Kira's cousin, but the son of Zed. The king. The king. Who's, who's also Dar's father. Also Dar's father. Oh, okay. oh, so bastard children is what you're talking about here? Like Game of Thrones? <laughs> Working <laughs> like, that like, angle. Like the king is having multiple children with multiple people? 
It, it, it's to ensure a battle for the throne later on. Is right. that what you're saying? Well, These yeah. are fantasy classic staples. Well, they never say he didn't get remarried. He, that's true. He could, he could have well, had a that's what we were queen. trying to yeah. figure out because, I mean, that would make yeah, Mark Singer have. and Tiny Roberts related at some mm-hmm. point, but apparently it's uh, a, through marriage yeah. that they are related. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's cool. It's also cool in Game of Thrones. Incest right, is also yeah. cool with them. So, <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that even if they were related, it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, exactly. In this movie. <laughs> Well, John Amos also uh, famously you'd recognize him from uh, movies such as Die Hard 2 and uh, Coming to America. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a long career. Um, still working also, I believe. I don't think he has passed on. I have to check, okay. but anyway. Um, was he okay. in the Coming to America sequel? Yes, he was. There so go. there you go. Yeah. Uh, okay, they so got literally everyone back for that movie. It's yeah. insane how deep they went on like even the extras and shit for that. Except John Landis. Didn't bring yeah. him back. Oh, so, well, uh, there's probably a reason for that. That's right. Kill that thing. Yeah. All right, it's dead. Nope. nope All right, nope. it's dying. Damn, just dying. straight with his finger. Dying. All right, okay. Oh, it's not fucking around. Uh, so, anyway, the goal of the plot at this point, we've got, because uh, Kiri is revealed to be not just a slave girl, she is actually a warrior, uh, right? Who gets mm-hmm. her armaments yes. back at some point. Her armaments are, uh, consist of, of uh, a, belt. a belt and a knife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but she's got wicked skills at throwing that thing. Oh, yeah. We didn't even. The uh, Beastmaster has like a specialized weapon. See, again, we forgot it because he doesn't use yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, like he yeah, should. he never like, does. Like, we don't need main... to talk about it because they didn't talk about this it. It should be his main weapon, <laughs> especially since he leaves it for the kid at the end of the movie. But, yeah. yeah. He uses it a couple times in the movie. It's a really cool, like, uh, it's a boomerang. boomerang dagger. Like the glave from Krull, right? You gotta have your sure. your hero has to. You haven't seen Crawl. I have not Sean? seen Crawl. I haven't seen Crawl either. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh no! So uh, that's like science. That's like uh, they took Star Wars and fantasy and just put them together in one movie. <laughs> um, he also swings, no, that's called Star Crash. So. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he also swings a, a, a mean sword, uh, Dar, a lot, swinging a it lot. on top of Mostly cliffs, uh, on top of rock formations. Uh, well, I mean, he does it well. It's like, he oh, does. I wouldn't walk up to that guy. I think he, it's like, a form of like intimidation. He, yeah. Like, all right, come on. Okay, but he's got one move. He kind yeah. Of does. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so so where are we going, Holly? What what's the drive? What mm. what what are we trying to accomplish with our character? What's he doing? Mm. It's a great great question, Colin. What are we talking about? Where are we at? <laughs> uh, so, what, what, so we, okay, so we we, we okay, so we Tanya met Roberts. we met Kira, but then she left. So then we met Seth and and Tom. So yeah. now he's joining them. Side to, quest to yeah. try to save Kira. Right. Because he's in love with her and it's Tom's cousin. But somehow so. this is somehow related to uh, the Rip Torn character because like, it seems like he's aiming towards Rip Torn. Well, right. Yeah. Well, Rip Torn's the one that wants to kill her. Right? Is it easier if we go by the ferret scenes as far as markers? <laughs> it might be. How? You know? what, are, what are the ferrets I think, doing right Are now? we up to the ferret Mission Impossible scene at this point? Oh, I don't... Are we Once there? we get into the castle or the, the pyramid, right? Because yeah. they have to infiltrate the pyramid. They're trying to save her. Right. So they did she, save she, her. Right. Well, she okay, had... Okay, they yeah. save her. They did she save gets her. her new gear. She had to go back. And she does she come? We just back? watched this movie. Yeah, we yeah. did. But, uh, but also, she just reappears in rooms at whatever time. Yeah. sometimes. and this yeah. movie's also two hours long. Also okay. that. Yeah, but she is rescued, or they find her. She has to go back. They see her again when they're doing when he sees the first kid sacrifice. Mm-hmm. He saves the kid. He leaves. You're backtracking a lot. <laughs> but this movie, at time is a circle is the thesis it statement of this fucking yeah, movie. Okay. It backtracks mm. so because much. Because this I is, this is yeah. I guess, like maybe a legitimate criticism yeah. of this yeah. movie is that it doesn't like have, because, you, know, you know, it's taking the Conan, even though they didn't obviously see it, but the, the, for the Howard, Robert E. Howard stuff is out there. Yeah. You've got your hero who his father is killed, and so he has to go after the guy who killed his father, right? Mm-hmm. And who's the magician mm-hmm. at the end of this thing? And once you kill him, you take him and you get your father's sword and you supplant your father. That's the whole fucking point of these goddamn stories. But this one says, no, we're going to split that character off in two. We're going to have the evil magician and the guy who destroyed your village and killed your father mm-hmm. as two separate like yep. people. Because he has two surrogate mm-hmm. or he has a surrogate father who was also killed. Right. So it's yeah. like, who is the main villain of the movie? It says it's uh, Rip Torn. Yeah, I think. Right. But then it's also the Juns. Well, because he's his first 
Revenge on the Juns. That is his first mission. That is the first thing he signs up for I think to it's do. Sidetracked after yeah after yeah. every his whole village is killed. His mission is revenge. And mm-hmm. then it's side quests and side tracks. And then he meets Tiny Roberts. And then he's just like, I'll follow her anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I think that's and the it's main more thing. rip torn going like this is the guy who's prophesied to kill me. Right, yeah. right. He recognizes because they tattooed his uh, hand or branded him. Yes, that it's like this is the guy who threatens my my rule right and so i'm going after him he's yes. not necessarily coming after me i'm i'm or our hero isn't going after the bad guy right. the it bad guy's going after the hero circumstantial a little bit does anybody else do they know the prophecy i know rip torn knows it but does do the other ones learn about it i don't i don't i don't think, I don't they think they do. so because when they recognize this the mark on his hand then like yeah, yeah, you'd think that'd be part of the prophecy that like the chosen one has like this mark yeah, you know? because but when, doesn't Seth know? But he seems to recognize it when he's standing in right. front of the thing. He's like, you're actually the firstborn son and you deserve yeah. to rule here. Yeah. But it only like occurs to him at that point because before that's you're marked by the gods or whatever. Yeah, see, this stuff should have been brought in earlier in the movie. Yeah. As sort of but motivation. The scene that confused me, and I said this during the movie, maybe you can answer this for me, is like, so Dar meets his father, who's now blind in the dungeon, yeah. right? And they rescue him. He's with, you know, the the Tom, the the king's actual son. And they uh, go out to a whatever. They meet with the rebel band. That, you know, and the king's like, we're going to go take the place back. But he says, and, and Dar is like, no, we, that's ridiculous. You know, you need an army to get in there. And the king says, we're not going to listen to this freak. He talks to animals. And Dar walks away in tears. <laughs> and you're like... Does he know that that was his father or is he just like really I think sensitive? It's, I think it's just the first time anyone's ever insulted him. <laughs> <laughs> is that Probably, what's happening? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because that would imply because later it seemed like Dar found out that uh, that he was um, only when Rip Torn's yeah. like, here's your firstborn or unborn son. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really, like he's like an Adonis and he lived in a small village. This is the first time anyone's ever insulted. Him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like that string of episodes on 30 Rock when no one's ever told John Hamm he's bad at anything. Yes. That's what it is. <laughs> yes, because exactly because is. John Hamm is so attractive. People are like, oh, it's fine. He's a doctor, he, yeah, but yeah. he's like the worst doctor ever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's when, exactly when, it. when he tries to make that steak with the orange Gatorade sauce that. <laughs> kills me like yeah that string of episodes on 30 rock is wonderful it's solid mm-hmm. oh yeah that's exactly what it is mm-hmm. yeah well i'm uh, I, i'm still surprised that he would i mean this is tears on both both cheeks right he, you yeah know, like he's, full-on yeah. baby oil streaks yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that did look like baby oil they, they didn't like, even it bother on too long it like was. i always point out to my husband when we're watching movies but like you can tell when they use a menthol stick on an actor to get him to cry because their eyelids will be super red yeah, yeah. Going like, like yeah. The, it's like painful for them so like once you can spot the menthol stick you see it everywhere but this was like they didn't even bother with the menthol stick they're like we're just gonna throw this shit on your face no, like, we're, we're relying yep. solely on Mark Singer's acting yeah. that's what we're doing he did drop you know one what? tear, but, you know tear but I think that was a menthol stick because it, you know, it's always when it drops from like the center yeah the, the menthol yeah. stick it always comes from the center yeah, yeah. I was for it I enjoyed it I thought he did well <laughs> As, Within uh, the context, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I thought I'd everybody like, did because I thought John Amos was really good. Yeah. I thought Rip Torn was being, you know, being what he needed I, to be yeah. for the movie. I mean, nobody can reach Jeremy Irons' level in the Dungeons and Dragons movie, mm-hmm. but I mean. <laughs> Have you seen that? I, yes, I uh, have. Well, Let Colin, you're the only person who's seen it. <laughs> from the sky. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, oh, no. So, uh, all right. So, this climaxes. First climax. First climax. Right? Because we got to deal with Rip Torn, right. who's about to sacrifice uh, Tanya Roberts because he captures her in a battle scene that we don't see. The movie just skips <laughs> right over it. Right. They describe they're going into battle, and, they're, and John doomed. Amos is like, we're doomed. And Dar's like, I'm not going to have a part of this because I told you not to do it. But they do it anyway. Not seen in the movie. <laughs> then everybody's captured. So Dar has to so go. So Sako has to come back and let him, <laughs> <laughs> let him know. All right, cat yeah. failed. Oh, Holly's Sacco, favorite character. Sacco. <laughs> you forget about Sacco? <laughs> Which like it sounds like what would you what did you say it was? It's Holly? Mankind Sock Puppet from WWF. Yes. Yeah. Because he was probably yeah. a giant Beastmaster fan. Pro- well, probably. Second to go yeah. with the wind. I most have seen He's okay. probably got a bunch of memorabilia in his house. Yeah. That would that the timeline works out. Right? Yeah. 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 
Well, Sako is like a villager that uh, helps. Uh, uh, His kid was saved. So yeah, he has to. He's indebted to mm-hmm. the Beastmaster. That's right. He's the one that Dar gets the eagle. The, <laughs> the eagle grabs this kid. Yeah, sorry. The Which the, the falcon. There you go. Grabs the kid <laughs> from being roasted in the fire. And then uh, Dar throws the kid in a sack and then brings the sack to. Uh, and he's throwing the sack around. around. He's like, Look what I have. Yeah. I have a present for you. It opens the sack. And I have something for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, he opens the door. <laughs> have something for you, Sako. Yeah. Um, we're, okay. not, so, we're not talking enough about the ferrets, though. I it's well, this is, about but this the is their moment. This is the moment you get we to We passed over them. the Mission Impossible moment, though. I mean, That's already happened is. at this point. The Mission Impossible moment is yeah. their yeah. highest moment, so I feel like. So what is the Mission Impossible moment? <laughs> they, we need to get the keys, which are down in this dungeon right. where... Who is it that's being tortured? Do it's we know? Some, it's some guy they know? captured. Now we've some gone dude. through. They're going to like turn him into Bane and shit. Yeah. I, I mean, they are basically Banes because yeah. they yeah. Uh, they drop a, a Star Trek um, slug into their ear. Yeah. They right. go crazy. Their eyes start glowing. They put and a mask they get, on them. Yep. They get a mask sealed on them and then gauntlets with spikes on them. Yeah. yeah. And they're just fucking doom they're monsters at that point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Their, their outfits are dope. Though. They're yeah. awesome. The like, studs I everywhere. Them. The studs on yeah. like every inch and of their the get up. Yeah. yeah I, I dig cool. it. Uh, and and we, these two fucking ferrets by a string under their armpits just hanging straight <laughs> down are getting lowered down through this grate into this chamber. And these ferrets and like I've had ferrets before. This is how they are. They are just <laughs> they're just chilling. They're like, no, we're cool with this mission. We're going to they're not flailing around or anything. They're yeah. just they're hanging just, tight. Just going for what, the ride. Yeah. What's they're their coming. mission? To steal, to steal the, keys. the keys for what? Because ferrets love stealing shit. They do. <laughs> God, they fucking steal everything. They got to well, get um uh Zed is locked in the dungeon, and they yeah. have to get yeah, okay. Yeah. Although, why but, there's not a secret entrance like that uh, Tanya Roberts knows of? Yeah, I don't because, know, because she's just walking through the, walls. That yeah. whole scene of the ferrets being used to get the key ends up being completely non-essential to the movie because right. it, that, that never comes into play. Right. They get right. out through yeah. like a sewer drain or yeah. something. Well, but then he has the great line of "You're a little late" when the ferrets show up with the keys and shit's popping off. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. acknowledging. They're yeah. like, "Okay, this is, <laughs> didn't need to be in here at all." Uh, but his relationship with the ferrets, I love that he talks. See, he talks to them like they're people, but he has yeah. to he has to call to the falcon. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, like they're ready to escape, and he's even like, "I gotta wait for my kids." Yeah, <laughs> I gotta wait for my little ones. Yeah, yeah. And then, then they have their big moment <laughs> on the top of this pyramid, yeah. right? <laughs> So so, how do the ferrets? What 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 happens? Holly, I can't talk can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kodo, I believe it is right. Not Poto, like, Poto you, Yeah, difference? it was Kodo. I I don't think our hero knows the difference. Well, don't they? Uh, he was so, looking. He was like Kodo and Poto. Like he knew. He had to check, but he well, knew. right because Rip Torn kills the king. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, and then Mark Singer and Rip Torn fight. Yes. Get uh, Rip Torn gets stabbed, and then mm-hmm. he's still alive. Of yeah, course, he, d- he doesn't double tap. You yeah, he's got to no, do that. Stab to the gut, and, and yeah. he's got maybe some magic. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so he like tries to make an attack on uh, Mark yeah, Singer, who's carrying Tanya Roberts down the stairs. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. So he's occupied and can't right. use, he can't fight back. So Kodo saves the day, jumps and knocks uh, Rip Torn into he bites his neck a bunch yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. Like you like, see the blood. Yeah, because yeah. Don Coscarelli <laughs> directed this movie, and then they fall into the fire, and poor Kodo. <laughs> reaches the end of uh, of his adventure. And little Poto's like looking over the edge of the stair like squeaking <laughs> for him and I was like, oh my god, this is too sad. I can't. It is kind of heartbreaking. Yeah. <sighs> but I mean, he, he went out in a blaze of glory. Though, yeah, a know? blaze of glory. Yeah. Really, yeah. really did. I don't and know then, if Holly appreciates that joke. I know, because now, now at this point in the movie, we've saved, uh, we've saved uh, the kingdom. Yeah, right. kingdom's safe. Uh, right. We've got the got once girl. The future king. The girl is safe. Yep. Future king is safe. And um, friends are still alive. Kill all right, the bad all right. Guy. So movie's gonna wrap up, old, right? Old scraggly king that's just gonna ruin everything. He's gone. Yep. He's gone, don't, right? Don't have yeah, we're not deal him. with him anymore. We're done. Yep. So we're done. Awesome. Except, fuck. There's Except another twenty minutes left Juns. in this movie. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we forgot about the Juns. We forgot about the Juns because they are like non. Got they them Mongolians. They keep referencing them, but for some reason, I kept on thinking that the Juns were working as henchmen to. Uh, Rip Torn because he is seen with his priests riding into Dar's village after right. it's destroyed with the Jun. Mm-hmm. Right. So 
Right. I mean, you're thinking like, okay, we're going into the stronghold. This is where they are. In right. This like city. the Jun should be there. Yeah. Not a. No, they entity. don't seem to be much of a threat, honestly. Like, no. And the way, and it's you know, they beat Zed, and then we, like I said, we have this whole other battle and everything. Like stuff like this should have been happening at the same time. Yeah. Like yeah. Mark Singer should be fighting uh, um, Mayax while yes. the, while the villagers are fight. Like the, the he keeps like. Trying to get the villagers like, we will fight! We will fight to the end! And yeah. then there's no villagers for the rest of this movie helping his ass yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. But they should be fighting, like, the, the rest I, yeah. of the Jun while he's fighting. I would, right. Yeah. I, that's, if this were a Lord of the Rings or any other high fantasy, that's exactly what would be happening. And you'd yeah. give, you'd give uh, the Seth character I was gonna probably... Say, the, Seth would be, yeah. He'd be fighting the lead bad guy yep. yes. from the right. giant. Or exactly Tanya it. Roberts would be yep. something, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. There, or there would be some, like, female uh, I was going to say, yeah. she, she would be... Go up against she, yeah. she, yeah. she would be, be the fighting, witch. like, the so big we witch. Want, yeah. we want the mummy, right? Like, that's <laughs> the movie we want. Like... Well, yeah. And we're talking <laughs> just about efficiency in storytelling yes, because this did feel like the movie ended and then kept going yes. with a gigantic battle scene where they uh, there's like this uh, like tar moat. There's a tar moat. Okay, is it tar? It's tar. He they says said some it's tar. tar something. Yeah. Is it always tar? <laughs> Why? It, because this is this is where we get into Game of Thrones shit again. Because this is just like the fucking um, the wildfire well, that they a, they put in the moat in the is it the it's not the Battle of the Bastards it's the Battle of the Winterfell Bay. where they put it in that no, yeah. no oh that's the that's the Battle of, Winter, that's, the Battle of Winterfell yeah yes the Battle Some of Winterfell they actually put it in the moats and blow it up just that's like right. they do yeah. in this fucking that's right. yeah but and like we discussed while we were watching the movie this is better. Yeah, like this is a fucking really explosion that goes explosion. up. Looks but, like somebody under anticipated yes. the load that was going to go off. Yes, because <laughs> you've got actors down there, and it's like holy like, fucking it's shit! Flame, it's like whatever. five stories tall flame. Just I will shot. agree with you that the explosions and the flames are better. But the fight choreography is boring as fuck. Yeah, it's very weird and slow. Yeah. in this movie. Lots but of kicks. It's not the best. <laughs> there, there are a lot of kicks. There's yeah. a lot of yeah. fire kicking. And, and then another Game of Thrones moment, he uses his fucking medallion he got from the Flesh Bat people to call in a favor and help them out. Just like <laughs> flesh the, bat. the Flesh yeah, Bat people. I mean, well, I, we don't know people, what they're so called, right? They the don't have bats. names, right? Flesh Bats. Like, but they're not called anything in this uh, not in the movie. movie. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't I don't no, 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 I agree. It's just yeah. Flesh Bats. It's just <laughs> <sounds> <laughs> so yeah, Flesh Bats. The no, flesh bats show up and, and they, they, do, are. And they make that disgusting. noise when their arms open. Yeah, you can hear the skin oh, flap. It's it. gross. Yeah. It sounds like it sounds the... like when Batman opens his cape. It does. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. But that like kind of takes care of like all the soldiers that Dar and Seth couldn't uh, take right. out yeah. as they're being circled and they're like, oh no, yeah. we're done yeah. for. All of a sudden, <laughs> the bat people right. show up behind yeah, them. That Batman was pretty cool. Up. You know when they actually is this when the ferrets get get taken over the the gate and cut the. Cut the rope. They get thrown over. How many times who, did they throw ferrets in this movie? Oh, just, too many just times. It, made me a, it was a little hard they to watch They really manhandle point. these ferrets. Yeah. They really do. They're I mean, randomly. to be fair, you can. Ferrets are very bendy and, like, yeah. they can like kind of take anything. Furry snakes. Like, yeah, they are yeah, like how, furry snakes. How the but... insides of a ferret work? That's a lot of Like, length. it's, yeah, they're weird. They're really <laughs> weird. But, <laughs> weird animals. But... So what, what what is it they they there's like a counterweight they have to they're trying to chew through oh, the yeah. rope to yeah. yeah let the counterweight go to frick go up and you think this guy's about to hack one with the, the sword and I was like oh my god is this movie really gonna go for this at this moment and kill a ferret Oof. yeah yeah it does but, not no but. the other yeah. the other ferret because we don't know which one is which but the other yeah. ferret bites the other him one, in the well, nuts the other one's dying, <laughs> right in the well, fire. This no this is oh, before. before the okay. two are yeah, yeah, before. yeah. But you, you get a nut, a nut shot, a ferret nut shot in this movie. It's great. It's fantastic. Save, yeah. save the day. Like Sean said, they are fourth build probably in the movie. I mean, yeah. Oh, sure. Um, he could not do any of this without them. I know. He'd be dead well, yeah. then, without it. Yeah. He like, has... I, just, I did not expect the ferrets to be his sidekick more than the black tiger. Yeah, me neither. I like, thought that was a surprise honestly, to me. Tiger's holding back and he should be pulling his weight a little bit more. I agree. Yeah. Do you think yeah. that... <clears throat> A star was discovered on set, and they rewrote the script to give the ferrets more. To do. I mean, it's I less so. dangerous to work with ferrets than it is with because the tiger. They're like, it's going to be easier to do this, yeah. than the tiger. Yeah, let's have the, ferrets. the way that this movie it does kind of feel like they maybe made some shit up. Like as they were going, and the fact that that whole sequence where you know uh, the battle sequence doesn't, you know, we don't see it actually right. happen on screen. Right, is like 
That's like, well, we're just kind of right ourselves over here, and then we come back over here. I, liked, I like to think they were trying to shoot shots with, with the tiger, and it wasn't cooperating, and then the fair wrangler was like, I think we're up for the challenge, yeah. and like yeah. just volunteered. Yeah. All right. He's just talking, he's like, all right, you guys ready? This is your moment. This is it. Yeah. yeah. This is what we're training for. Let's go. They well. are super, like trainable because they're super playful so it's really everything's a game to them you know so like it's really easy to direct animals that act like that they're acting their hearts out Mm -hmm. like when they gotta like walk down the rope to get to the thing they're just oh the way they 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 waddle they have personality which is like great well i know it's very sad that one of the ferrets (sighs) bites it but But what (laughs) happens at the end it's it's redeemed though (laughs) so he keeps his ferrets in his little pouch and it's just so cute (laughs) At the very end, Pogo pops out of the out of the out of the little poncho thing or pouch thing, and two little babies follow him. There's little ferret babies. So the legacy continues, you know. (laughs) I mean, it really does. The the, the joy squealing that we heard. I mean, I was doing it too because it was amazing. (gasps) I'm just sitting back there shaking my head. Colin is shaking Uh, his head like you guys are. Because we we were all going, aww. (laughs) I was like, oh god, what has this become? (laughs) Oh. Well, the legacy lives on. The question is, does the legacy live on? Do the ferret, the, the ferret family continue on to the sequel, Beastmaster 2, Adventures in Time? What's it called? Did you look Portal it up? And, I didn't. Okay. Get it, we gave up. <laughs> and then Beastmaster 3, eventually. It's like Braxis. It's like the heart of the, the heart of Braxis. Heart of Braxis. Son of Braxis. Like I want to yeah. believe that like the last, like eventually it's just like the ferrets movie. Yeah, and I mean, the, the, on, the, yeah, right. ferrets, I mean, the ferrets are on a quest, and he's like their sidekick. That's what I want to. I mean, he's he's like, if anything, this is a good thing for him because now he's got three instead of two. Yeah, so you know, and who knows if he makes more friends in Los Angeles in Beastmaster Two. I, he goes to he goes to L.A. in Beastmaster yeah. Two. Oh, I was gonna say, <laughs> I bet if he goes to New York, there's a rat joke about the ferrets. Oh, yeah, New York well, giant I, I rats. See, I see joke. a tiger. I see a uh, different hawk, and I see ferrets. There we go. Ferrets right. are there. Three of them. Uh, I see two being oh, held. Oh, okay. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe the uh, mm. retired oh, is, well, is Poto. Yeah. Colin, maybe if they go back in time, they go back to when that ferret was still alive. In Beastmaster 3. Okay. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. I'm looking at the poster for Beastmaster 2 right now. Uh-huh. It is a time travel movie. In this little thumb, what do you see? Down there. What does that look like? Well, I can't really see. It looks like Back to the Future. There, there you go. Done yeah. now? <laughs> Yes, it does. All right. That little so poster. That is that a is full on. That's future. even the font in the same color font <laughs> I mean, as the Back the to the Future poster. Did, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's. Yep. Wow. Okay. They were really going for it. <laughs> and 66 episodes of a television show, The, the Continuing Woo! Adventures of Beastmaster. It's a juggernaut. It's a, a, a pop culture juggernaut. We can't right get out of the for, way. for uh, update? No. I want to see, like. <laughs> well, because Don Coscarelli did get the rights back to True. the. And he does want to, uh, you know exploit his property sure. in some way to financially Just like Larry secure. Block. They got that one yeah. thing, they're going to go back well, to it. The other thing I heard um, was that the the reason that this movie feels as long as it does is because uh, Coscarelli was locked out of the editing oh, yeah. room by the producers who eventually said, like, this movie needs to be an epic. So they put back in a bunch of stuff that he had cut out and they extended scenes and all that to give it, you know, a two hour. They must know. not have seen Phantasm. Yeah. The movie he edited, wrote, and directed all by himself. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, 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 so did, did his movie end at the temple? I assume it's still, he shot everything. So, yeah. I, yeah. I think I they know. just he, made, they extended it probably in, you know. Yeah, it's probably in the middle where nothing happens for a long time. I mean, probably. All those, maybe the side quests, mm-hmm. except yeah. for like the bad people. He doesn't disown the movie, but he's not entirely happy with it. Which so. is always kind of funny that the movie that people know you the most for is like the one that you're like, the, that was that's the least my movie right? just like, oh. of the stuff that I've done. But, right? you know, that's how it works. All right. So uh, we're going to have to go around the room and tell you whether we would recommend that you watch. You've already seen it, but we're going to tell you if we liked it. The Beastmaster. Uh, but before that, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we are going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. All right, thank you, Igor. Igor's got his bandaged loincloth on today, I, I see. say, what kind of beast do you think he's the master of? I don't want to know. Yeah, but let's not open up that power. No. Uh, he probably got just ferrets running inside of him. But he does smell like ferrets. So. Oh, that's true. 
That is the worst thing about ferrets. Yeah, they, is the yeah, way they, they smell. They smell. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 They yeah. Have, yeah. They have like a scent gland. Yeah. Oh, which like a, well, a lot of like domesticated ones have it removed, but there's still like a residual like smell. Yeah. So. It's guinea pigs. Like yeah. kind of cousins of ferrets. That's not true. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not at all. <laughs> all right. So uh, we want to let you know how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show by uh, following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, <clears throat> MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, mm. uh, lets us know that we are inducting someone from this movie into the, the hallway, oh, right? Okay. The stairwell of fame. Uh, the actor Rod Loomis apparently played Zed, the king, mm -hmm. in Beastmaster, but we have also seen him in Body Double, in which he played a TV director, and he was also Freud in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> I was not here for either. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, so. I do not remember. A definite hallway. All right. Well, about <laughs> the Beastmaster, Monty Montague says, turn on the freak show. Hey, Beastmaster's on. <laughs> 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 All right, bravo. Nice. bravo. Well Hopefully done. the next 20 of these aren't the same joke, yeah. but that was good. Um, <laughs> well, Maya Madsen, uh, Robin Lineman, Silverberg, and Travis Legler all wonder what took us so long to get to the mighty classic that is the Beastmaster. Mm -hmm. Again. We got a long just, list. Yep, yeah, long yeah. list. We'll get there. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, hopefully you can tell us how this is any different from all the other movies from the late 70s and early 80s about shirtless dudes in furry underwear. Ferrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's it. He talks to animals. <laughs> um, Darren Rook says, oh, Christ, this brings back so many memories. I can't wait to watch this again this weekend and listen to your podcast. That's well, probably awesome. on HBO. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's probably on somewhere right now, I guarantee Probably, you. right? Well, now it's on Prime. No. Uh, Amy Reynolds Carroll says, I love this movie. I remember watching it with my mom as a kid. The bird and the ferrets were awesome. Yeah. 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 I agree. Uh, Jordan Hilliers says, I love this movie as a kid, but how is this PG? I know this was a few years before there was a PG-13, but good grief. Look at the parents guide for this on IMDb. I'm sure it's a long because you know that IMDb one has like bullet points for every scene yeah. like yeah, that. Like I'm sex, sure it's very long. Uh, yeah. Eyeball ripping. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah. 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 What's the drive? <laughs> uh, yeah. And lots of bondage outfits. Yeah. <laughs> um, the B movie poster vault writes in and says, "I watched this a couple time back in the VHS days for sure. I remember it being a pretty fun flick. Was going to revisit it recently, only to discover this sucker is much longer than I remember. Just a few <laughs> minutes shy of two hours long." I guess I had more time on my hands when I was 15. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so if this is showing on TBS, is it like three hours long with commercials? Yeah, it's got, it's got, it, it is yeah. an epic when mm -hmm. it's on TV. I know. <laughs> Gone with the wind. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kryptonian Orphan says the Beastmaster is what happens when you mix Conan, He-Man, Patrick Swayze, and the Horse Whisperer. Having said that, what such fun <laughs> memories I had of this one. I was nine when it came out. Thanks for the review. It's been awesome hearing you guys and gals all in the same room. Aww, thank you. Thank We've you. enjoyed it too. And that's a perfect summary. The, the, <laughs> I specifically like the horse whisperer because Holly, this was your first time watching this, right? No, but basically. Yeah, it was yeah, my first yeah. time and we were yeah. both hoping that like he would take control of all the Jun's horses and make them yeah. like, run off a cliff at some point and it yeah. never happened. But, but why not? But well, you know, Game of Thrones can... also never uh, did that. That's also <laughs> Game of Thrones had the opportunity and also never did that. Um, well, B. Shaw Foolery says Mark Singer in this movie he says every time I see him in a non Beastmaster role, it feels like nature is out of whack. Right? I couldn't. You see him that him often? In, in, I know. I, I was know, like, I, I, I don't. Oh, yeah. well, maybe you watch a lot of V. V. I mean, or nice. Arrow. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, Grant Parrish says Beastmaster is great. I watch it. As I watch it, it feels like a failed TV pilot. Very proto Xena Hercules. And Mr. Singer has such a fantastic yeah. body and shows, and the show knows how to show it. I have very mixed feelings about the animals on the set. The tiger really got sick from being dyed black. Mm -hmm. I mean, two and three, they don't die cats anymore. But two is trash, despite the claiming the time travel and involves exactly zero time travel. What? <laughs> don't they end up in Los Angeles? I think it's uh, uh, dimensional travel, even though it is called. In portal of portal. time it, i just looked it up and i can't remember what the fucking <laughs> name is oh, okay. i feel uh, like you've looked it through the portal of time through the portal of time yeah 
I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there is no time travel. That would make that movie even greater. <laughs> no time travel. <laughs> and that's in the title. Oh, Stay boy. tuned for a year from yeah. now when I'm yeah. Beastmaster, Beastmaster 2. 2. It's got to come. I'm surprised you didn't bring it instead of this. Yeah, yeah I'm really mind. surprised too. Only because the Beastmaster is the Beastmaster, at least to me. Like okay. it's, it is, it's on the scale where this has got to come from. All right. Uh, Adam Kaler says, I remember what I remember of seeing this as a kid is the creepy bat creatures that hug the guy to death. Yeah. It appears they use dishwashing liquid to clean his clock. I <laughs> didn't want to touch a plate in the sink after that. If this were made today, it would have the spinoff movie, The Dishwashers. They're in New York. <laughs> they eliminate the toughest stains, smiting their enemies and looking for love. Maybe it would play on the Hallmark channel. Hell you could see yeah. that in a commercial. Hell yeah. Yeah. Really if they like sure. really sold out and yeah. they're just like, yeah. They just hug a dish and it's clean. Yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> the dishwashers coming soon. Uh, Steve Carney writes in and says, I just watched Beastmaster the other night for the first time Ooh. and I really didn't care for it and it didn't click with me. I don't think I've seen a movie with more continuity errors between shots. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I grew up with the Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, but I'd rewatch those and crawl before I'd rewatch or even recommend the Beastmaster. So my question is, what fantasy movie do you like more than Beastmaster? I think I'm on the opposite end of him because I would not watch Dark Crystal or what was the other one he said? Labyrinth. Labyrinth. I mean, not those are so different, I yeah. feel like. Those aren't even in the same league. No, sure. like, I yeah. wouldn't associate yeah. those. But going around the table, favorite fantasy movie that you would I recommend? I mean, from this era? From or like period? Because like obviously Lord of the Rings is like, that's the greatest I mean, fantasy uh, movie well, ever made. Well, they're thinking about uh, par with this. Guy with a Sword well, and a Loincloth. I, don't, I haven't seen very many. And I haven't seen very many I liked, so I don't really know. Probably okay. your. Probably, yeah, probably your. Your, your Hunter from the yeah. Future. Holly, yeah. also your? Masters of the Universe, hands down. Okay. Another movie I wouldn't watch unless somebody sat me down to watch it. Yeah. Um, it's. I mean, it's probably going to be... Circle of Fire. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, it's your this, man. Jesus like, Christ. Like, like, seriously, like, Conan the Barbarian. Nobody. Nobody. Uh, Conan, like, that's clearly the greatest of these movies. Yeah, but <laughs> that doesn't mean I want to watch it. Well, uh, there's another one. I haven't seen that in another, like, 15 well, years. Yeah, I haven't seen that in forever either. Oh, really? So it's yeah. not, like, in my mind. No, Colin, that's not something crap. I sit down to watch all the time. Holy exactly. yeah. smokes. But okay. speaking well, of your, we talked about while we were watching this movie, like, where's our your, sorry, what's this guy's name again? Dar. 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 Dar crossover movie, right? Because this feels like they're the same universe. They're both going to the future. Yeah. Uh, and we talked about, Sean, you wanted us to save her for the air. Who do we think we would win in a your versus Dar movie? Oh, yeah. So did. maybe when we do our wrap up, say who you think would win in a your Dar. versus Dar. Your is definitely taking Tiny Roberts. But I mean, York gets all the women. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they are yeah. just presented yeah. to him. Yeah. He, he's the man. <laughs> yeah, he's the man. It's, yeah. your, it's, it's yours, it's song. He's the man. Yeah. Yeah. He, you know what? He's got a song. Yeah, that why? might put him over yeah. the edge. Yeah, why, why, why doesn't Beastmaster, Beastmaster have a song? song? Yeah. 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 Beastmaster. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe in Something. Beastmaster 2. Yeah. Who knows? There's, now we're going to have to see it. Right? There's so many, you're just giving so many reasons to watch this. <laughs> Hopefully there's a rap at the end of Beastmaster oh. 3. Okay, so oh, oh, now we're going to go around the room like turtles. and tell <laughs> you eye shows up. Yeah. what we thought of uh, the Beastmaster and whether we would recommend it to you, starting with Colin. Colin, what did you think of the Beastmaster? Uh, man, I got a hard time with this movie. Uh, um, Stop because watching this there, shit. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. Because there are... There is a lot of stuff to like about Beastmaster, you know? Um, but you also have, uh, I would say, probably a wider knowledge of more of these movies. And I think that's going to affect your... Opinion. I mean, I've seen some... Well, I mean, just looking at it, like, strictly as a movie, I, I think I get the appeal, why it had, like, such a mass appeal, because basically, even though the plot may be hard to describe, and I think... You know, uh, part of well, that may also be part of the appeal is that you can't remember what happened in the fucking movie. So, so when you, you watch it, it again, it's like you're watching a new movie or you see a scene and you're like, oh yeah, there's these bat guys in it or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah right. So it's like being an Alzheimer's patient. Yeah, sure. yeah. But so, especially if you put commercials in it, I mean, I can't right? imagine. You know, I mean, I especially how long they are on network television. You'd go five minutes, you come back like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the character motivations are extremely simple. There is no point in time when you don't know why anybody's doing what they're doing because it's like uh, he helps people uh, or who are being attacked, various, yeah. you know, or you know, and this guy wants to kill him, and <laughs> so he wants to kill wants me, to, so I'm going to kill yeah, him. Yeah, so I mean, it's uh, and it's basically a juvenile, you know, sci-fi fantasy or not sci-fi, but f actual fantasy. Um, but I got to tell you, man, I mean, the fact that like I've seen this movie three times now and sat down tonight and like, 
okay why are they doing what the you know i mean because it's just like as a movie <laughs> i don't think that it works it's like yeah you can watch other fantasy movies from this era like uh you know well i'm gonna say conan conan the the destroyer uh your the hunter from the future even was more fun to me than this one um that uh yeah i don't know i don't think that i would actually recommend that you watch i know this is like i feel un-american somehow <laughs> uh by saying this but it was just like there's a lot of good shots there's a lot of good scenes there's cool designs there's a lot of cool ideas there's a lot of stuff going on in this movie but it never kind of gels it only works in episodes it feels a lot like the hobbit in that way i didn't like those movies either because they just kind of seem unfocused and yeah and no reason the, for and that to be three movies the the narrative just kind of uh you know like there's two climaxes when you're right we should have been it all happening at once so it's like even on a scripting level it's busted, but it has great music. I think the actors are good. You know, am I going to recommend it? No, I got to stick with my, I'm going to say there you go. no stick with it, Colin. On, stick with uh, it. on Beastmaster. Colin, are you going to buy this movie? <laughs> Probably, because it's a, uh, you know. That's it. Now, I'm sorry, Colin. Now, that is fucking now, insanity. Now, hold on. No, no, no. Because I will defend Colin in this. Because I, I, bought it, I bought it before I watched Why? it. Why? <laughs> no, 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 no. You didn't buy it before you watched it for the first time. You no, bought it before yeah. you watched it Because I'm time. like, well, there's, it's there's probably like, you know, better than I remember. I'll give Colin, it another shot. Colin, fucking sickness, the, dude. Yeah, there's know, also like special stuff on, on this. There's like a But whole, if he doesn't like a, the movie, why would he want to watch that? There's a like, whole history of like, that's like filmmaking me, no, no, on no, these that's things. That's like going to a store and being like, I'm going to buy that shirt. Do you like it? No, I'm never going to wear it, but I'm yeah, going to buy that, it. But that yeah. shirt doesn't come with special features. That's true. But if you don't like the movie, why do you like the special features? But this is the thing, Michaela. You can argue sense all day long. <laughs> it's a sickness. <laughs> it is you a just sickness. said it was a sickness. I I, I'm admitting that I, I have a problem. We're trying to help you with your problem. Nah, you're uh, fine, Colin. You're, you're right. fine. Uh, Michaela, what did you think of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. This is my first time watching this. I don't, I don't know why I didn't see this as a kid. I don't know. I guess I just wasn't like a sword and sorcery, sword and sandal household growing up. But um, I'm... I wish I would have, but I'm also glad I didn't because those flesh bat people would have scarred me for life as a child. They always stuck uh, in my head. Yeah. And the close-up camera shots they get in some of these fight scenes, those always freak me Right. Too. There's some real tight close-ups. Um, it's difficult for me to speak ill of Don Coscarelli because <laughs> I love him so much and because I've met him twice and he's like one of the only convention guests I've met multiple times that knew who I was the second time remembered me and was like, Aww. oh, you were here last year. Your name's Michaela, right? Aww. And I was like, oh my God. But so he's awesome. a great dude to meet at a convention. If you ask him anything you want, he'll be honest with you. He's super grateful for his friends, especially after Angus Scrimm's passing. He's really grateful that anyone even remembers who he is anymore and comes out to see him. So if you ever see him and get a chance, definitely do it. Um... And uh, he he's the same age as my dad, and my dad like thought that Don Coscarelli was like the coolest person growing up because he loved Phantasm. So it's like it is difficult for me to speak ill of him, but this is not his best work. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I appreciate that like he kind of just makes movies, and whatever happens, happens, and I I think that's really admirable. Um, and I mean, he got to make a fucking nine million dollar movie in the eighties. That's more than any of us have ever done. So um, this movie. It sags a lot in the middle. It doesn't need to be two hours long. Uh, not a fan of like animal usage to this degree in movies. It is. It, we've seen movies that are much worse, obviously, but this one's still not good. Um, however, the ferrets are <laughs> the delightful. Ferrets. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, Mark Singer. I gotta appreciate how cut he is in this movie. Like that could not have been easy. He looks a, like a fucking Frank Frazetta, Frazetta painting in this movie. It's nuts. He's like a, a skinnier, lankier, like Bruce Lee. Almost. Yeah, it's yeah. insane how shredded he is. Um, this And like the, the absurdities of this movie are just so fun. It is a bunch of side quests. There is no main quest. There is no main plot. But I'm okay with it. And it takes enough chances. And it tries to do cool things. And I can appreciate that. And I had a great time watching it. So I'm going to recommend it. Holly, what did you think? Um, yeah, this wasn't my first time watching it. I watched it when I was a kid, but I don't, I didn't remember any of it. So it was kind of my first time watching it. Um, I, I kind of agree with both of you. Like, Colin, I get where you're coming from. Um, you know, we, we talk, we've talked about it all the time on, on this show. Um, there are certain movies that we watch that if we had watched them alone, we wouldn't have enjoyed them as much. And I can see that with this movie. Like, I had fun watching it with you guys. But if I had just watched it at home by myself, I don't know that I would have enjoyed it as much. Um, so I get where you're coming from, Colin. Um, but then I also am on board with 
what Michaela said, um, because this was a fun movie. It's it's very problematic. It's not a it's not a good movie by any means. There's a there's a lot wrong with it. It's slow in a lot of parts. Um but it is fun watching it with a group of people. And that's, you know, that's what we base our rating on, right? How our experience watching it here in the basement. So uh, I'm going to have to recommend it. Yeah, I think it's fun. It's, you, I mean, you got to experience it, right? It's Beastmaster. <laughs> it's Beastmaster. You got to. So, yeah. Sean. The Beastmaster. Um, like Holly, um, I watched this more when I was younger. I mean, it's been a good 15 years since I've seen this movie. But when it was on, um, I watched it a ton. Um, I had a really good time watching it again tonight. Um, I agree with what everybody said going around the table, more or less. It does sag in places. I would love to see what Don Coscarelli would make this movie into. Like, what he... Uh, I, this is what I want to talk to him about. I'm like, what, what's different? What would you have done? Like, maybe, um, I mean, maybe you find out in that commentary and that new Blu-ray going. Who knows? I know. Colin, I know, right? let us yeah, know. Right? I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> right. I'm curious, too. This is why you get yeah. these things. Um, but I had I had a lot of fun tonight. It was a lot of fun, like, I mean, maybe you can chalk it all, all up to nostalgia. Um, but I think uh, I had a really fun time tonight. I think the movie is... It is a little how to put it if yeah they're not the motivation the, the driving force is not clear in this movie um we're not entirely sure like who the who our main bad guy is um motivations for characters change um, um characters leave and they have to be saved again like it, it there's a lot of repetition in this movie where as we've discussed earlier on there didn't need to be and it could be way tighter there's it probably feels more like an anthology <laughs> it it, 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 it I guess so, because it feels like it goes for, like... It does feel like it spans years. Yeah. Like, like this is, <laughs> and it does, kind of, because we started with a kid and all that stuff. Yeah. And it does. But it does... His journey feels like it spans a long time. And I guess I can see how that comes across in this movie. Yes, it is a little long in the tooth. Um, but I think there's... I think there's a lot in here uh, to really love. Like, I had I had a lot of fun, especially with moments where, as I was saying earlier, it does feel like a game of D&D. Like, I can see people... I could see people playing D&D and having to work out some of the contraptions that were in this movie, like I described earlier. Um, and that, to me, is, like, fun. Um, uh, I'm going to recommend it, obviously. I think I might have to get that Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's because uh, I'm really curious about, like, the history of this. But, yeah, it's it's a fun movie. Um, I You know, it's got its flaws, obviously, but I think, like especially the influence we've discussed that it's had on pop culture for uh, <laughs> continuing on. Um, I think you have to watch it. It's the Beastmaster, And if nothing else, there's ferrets in it, which are it's awesome. <laughs> like Delightful. they're great. Again, fourth build. Delightful. Um, it's the Beastmaster. I think you have to watch it. So I'm definitely going to recommend it. That was a twist. I didn't see coming. The baby ferrets. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy. I, I knew, like I, I, I had forgotten about it, but then I read it when I was doing research. And I'm like, oh, when I knew it was coming, I'm like, Holly's oh, going to love this. I was like, <laughs> watching you when it came up i'm like she's gonna think this is great I did. <laughs> but there it is well there it is all right so it's Beastmaster on the saturday night freak show next week we're gonna be watching a movie that's chosen by holly holly what are we gonna watch next week next week we're staying in the 80s Ooh, of we're course gonna, but we're gonna go horror a little forgotten gem called i madman what all right i don't know what this is oh all right then. either okay all right colin knows yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay so <laughs> next week we're watching i mad man we hope you'll join us and until then ladies and germs the basement is going dark <laughs>